Back-to-back -back solar flares are headed for Earth, and that new is a double-edged sword, or that news. Uh, so on one hand, it could create the dazzling auroras that we're used to when it comes to solar flares. It could also lead to the northern lights over the next several days, with even more solar storms to come. The strength we saw yesterday on those particular bands was almost 10,000 times the normal background that comes from the sun. The sun just unleashed one of the biggest explosions ever recorded in 17 years, and it had some wild impacts on our planet, especially our technology. The explosion caused two hours of radio interference in sunlit parts of the world. According to the scientists, the radio burst was so extensive that it affected even the higher frequencies. But do you know why it was such a big deal? On December the 14th, 2023, the sun erupted with a massive solar flare a sudden burst of intense radiation and energy that could be seen as a bright flash on the sun's surface. The scientists and researchers were so stunned to look at its intensity that they classified it as an X-class flare, which is almost 10,000 times more powerful than a typical flare. Most X-class solar flares are typically graded from 1 to 9, while the recent phenomena were graded X 2.8. According to scientists, this specific flare was equivalent to the energy of billions of hydrogen bombs. But do you know how the scientists measured the intensity of this solar flare? All of this is possible with the help of advanced instruments and satellites launched into space that monitor the activity of the sun. At any instance, scientists can observe whatever is happening on the sun, especially the eruption of solar flares and their effects on the Earth. For example, NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory, SDO, captured some extraordinary images and videos of the sun's far northwesterly area, where a cloud of plasma or hot gas was ejected into space. This cloud of plasma is otherwise known as coronal mass ejection, or CME. The coronal mass ejection is capable of traveling at speeds of millions of kilometers per hour. Let me clarify one thing. The solar flare and the coronal mass ejection are two different but interrelated phenomena that can have significant consequences on our planet. For starters, the coronal mass ejection involves billions of tons of matter in the form of plasma leaving the sun, whereas a solar flare is just a sudden enhancement of X-rays from a small region in the solar corona. The solar flare can produce streams of high-energy particles called solar energetic particles, or SEPs. However, the atmosphere of the planet Earth shields much of these SEPs. Therefore, the consequences of a solar flare are mostly harmless. On the other hand, the coronal mass ejection can also produce SEPs. However, in this case, these SEPs are streams of magnetic field-aligned particles moving away from the sun. The coronal mass ejection is more likely to affect our activities on Earth than flares because they carry more material into a larger volume of interplanetary space increasing the likelihood that they will interact with the Earth. The coronal mass ejection, upon reaching the Earth, interacts with its magnetic field, which in turn causes a geomagnetic storm, ultimately affecting power grids, satellites, and radio communications. This is exactly what happened on December the 14th, 2023. When the coronal mass ejection reached the Earth, about 17 hours after the flare, it caused a strong geomagnetic storm that lasted for several hours. The geomagnetic storm was not only disruptive, but also beautiful to watch. It created amazing auroras in the skies, which were visible in many parts of the world, even in places where such sites are quite rare, like Hawaii and Cuba. The auroras are caused when charged particles collide with the atoms and molecules in the upper atmosphere of the Earth, creating colorful light shows that are visible in the night sky. After the coronal mass ejection reached the Earth last month, Several people reportedly saw beautiful auroras and shared stunning photos and videos on social media. Coming back to the actual question, why was this occurrence so unusual, yet so significant? Well, there were plenty of reasons for this. First of all, the solar flare that was detected last month was one of the largest ever recorded, and also the largest one in the current solar cycle, which is the 11-year cycle of the sun's activity which varies over time from periods of low activity, called solar minimum, to periods of high activity, called solar maximum. During the solar maximum periods, the sun produces more sunspots, 
which are dark patches on the surface of the sun that indicate intense magnetic activity. The more the sunspots, the more likely the sun will produce solar flares and coronal mass ejections. The current solar cycle began in 2019, and it has been unusually quiet with very few sunspots and flares. However, this solar flare is a clear sign that the sun's explosive peak, the solar maximum, is right around the corner. In the current solar cycle, there have been only 21 X-class flares, 12 of which came in 2023. At least three of these 12 flares bashed Earth with coronal mass ejections. The first came in January 2023. The second hit us in February, whereas the third hit us in July 2023. However, in August, another X-class flare triggered widespread radio blackouts but did not launch coronal mass ejection. Initially, some scientists predicted that this solar cycle would turn out to be the weakest one we've encountered in the last 200 years. They also predicted that the solar maximum for this cycle would be weak as compared to the previous solar cycles and would not arrive until 2025 at the earliest. But this year, we have experienced the most powerful geomagnetic storm in six years and seen sunspot numbers hit a 20-year high. Moreover, we have witnessed rare solar phenomena this year like cannibal CMEs, a gigantic hole in the solar surface and a canyon of fire eruptions. All of these signs indicate that the solar maximum is fast approaching. The solar flare that occurred recently forced the scientists to update their prediction, and they now believe that the solar maximum will be more active than the last one and arrive in early 2024. This is one of the main reasons why this solar flare took everyone by surprise, as it occurred during the solar minimum. It was much stronger than any other flares in this cycle. Not only was this solar flare unexpected, but it also challenged our understanding of the sun and its behavior and raised some serious questions about how well we can predict and prepare for future solar flares and coronal mass ejections. All in all, solar flares have both risks and benefits. When the solar flare exploded from the sun, it unleashed a wave of solar radiation that quickly bashed into Earth and disrupted our planet's magnetosphere. As a result, the radiation temporarily ionized the top part of Earth's atmosphere, which produced a moderate radio blackout covering most of the Americas, a temporary degradation or complete loss of radio signals in high frequencies for two hours. There were reports of power grid fluctuations, and even some pilots reported disruptions in radio communications during that specific time. The full extent of what the blackouts affected is still not clear, but we will surely find out soon. In addition to the blackouts, the solar flares create spectacular auroras, which are not only beautiful to watch, but also provide us with valuable information about the Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere. It allows us to understand how the Earth's magnetic field changes over time and space, and how it protects us from the solar wind and coronal mass ejections. Moreover, it can also help us study the dynamics of the Earth's upper atmosphere and how it responds to solar activity and climate change. You see, the auroras are a source of inspiration and wonder for people who appreciate the beauty and mystery of the natural world. So, what happened last month was a very rare and remarkable event that not only justified the power and beauty of the sun, but also reminded us of the challenges and opportunities that come with living within a solar system. The solar flare followed by the coronal mass ejection raised some pretty serious questions for us. For instance, how do we prepare for a more powerful solar flare that could cause severe and widespread disruptions of our technology? Can a stronger solar flare be harmful to the inhabitants of Earth? What can we do to mitigate the risks and increase the benefits of solar flares? Scientists and researchers are constantly studying the sun and its activity. It is believed that this knowledge will help us improve our understanding of the solar system and beyond. This solar flare has made everyone ask the same questions, and we need to think about the answers as we observe and learn from the sun and its activity, because sooner or later, the knowledge just might come in handy. The sun is not only our source of light and heat, but also our window to the universe and our guide to the future. So, what are your views on this solar flare? Let us know in the comments below. If you have reached this far, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon so you never miss any of our future updates. See you in the next video. Until then, take care.